So Sam, I'm on your Instagram here, right? And you make these incredible paintings. You teach other people how to do it. You're really successful on school. And also there's this amazing reel of you in a school shirt, just like cranking it out in the gym. <laughs> it's so unexpected. Tell me about that and why that's so important to you. Uh, well, I, I, I go to the gym in the, usually in the morning about like two or three times a week. I, I need to go more actually. I, I, I just get so busy as well. But um, yeah, just that particular morning that was quiet in the gym. And I'd, I guess I'd see lots of other like, you know, people I follow <laughs> posting reels of, them in the gym and also my Instagram where well, I only ever really like post my art so I just thought maybe it'd be cool if other people see some other aspects of my life and things I do so yeah I just set that up I, it was by pure coincidence I was wearing a school t-shirt <laughs> in the gym that morning but yeah <laughs> I just but it's true though I mean um I, I feel better when I go to the gym and I think it definitely helps you know helps you to focus more as well so yeah, I like, I've been going to the gym. I mean, I'm not a big guy or anything like that, but I've been going to the gym on and off since I was about like 22, and I've just always just carried on going. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's funny how you know there's certain things that we don't associate with each other. So you've got these like beautiful, tranquil, just like out of this world painting, and then I think I read somewhere that it's like you also like to listen to Megadeth, and it's like, yo, yeah. this is awesome. I love the mix. Yeah, yeah, I've been into metal since I was like about fifteen. Actually, yeah, when I started listening to Megadeth and bands, you know, other bands like uh, you know, Slayer, Metallica, well, they, you know that that kind of like thrash metal era. I'm still listening to the bands I was listening to like when I was a teenager in my early twenties. So, uh, and I'm now in, I'm now uh, forty five years young now. So, <laughs> I know I just. I just thought, yeah, that era, like 80s, 90s, uh, metal was awesome. I just think there's loads of good music because, I mean, I, I love other music as well. Like, I'm really into, like, 80s music, you know, 80s pop music and things like that. And just, I know, the 80s, man, there's some brilliant music that came from that era. <laughs> so cool. I was listening to When a Blind Man Cries by Metallica earlier on. Oh, yeah. Absolutely love it, dude. Yeah. How do you, talk to us about painting. How did you get into it? Um. Did you ever think that you'd be doing it full time, like being paid as a full time artist? Uh, it was always my dream to become a full time artist. But now I've I've been I've been painting uh, I've been painting ever since I was a, a child, and I always like landscape art. I'd, like I grew up in in uh, England, and yeah, you know, during when I was at school, I was like you know the best at art in the class and things like that. And uh, in England, uh, when you leave high school. You do things uh, like called A levels, basically. So it's like the sort of prequel to going to like university. And I did art for A level, and I got a really bad mark for it because I just wanted <laughs> to paint landscapes. And they were trying to make me do all this like abstract stuff that I just wasn't into. And I'm, you know, nothing against it or anything. It's just not my thing. Just you know, modern art. A lot of modern art. I'm just I'm not into it. I don't get it. I still don't get it. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just, I, I've always just liked that kind of traditional realism, landscape painting. Uh, my, you know, my inspiration is from like 19th century painters, especially. And then there's loads of cool modern day painters. But yeah, basically, by the time I was uh, 18, you know, also in high school, like the careers advisor sort of told me that I couldn't really make a living out of art and, you know, the usual story, you know, the soul starving artist thing. So basically, by the time I was 18, I, I kind of stopped painting after that. And then went to university, did that whole whole thing. I actually studied plant sciences. And then after that, I got a job at Kew Gardens in London. But then I quickly, oh, wow. yeah, quickly realized that um, there's not many jobs in science and it's just not a viable career option for me. But I was inspired by the botanical artist there. So I, I briefly took up painting again when I was living in London. This was in my mid-20s. And then after that, I got a job in the USA working for a tree company, having never done tree work in my life. So <laughs> went on hold and I was, I was uh, working on a tree crew there and then came back to London and was doing uh, tree surgery there. So, where, you know, things like climbing London street trees and trimming them and all that kind of stuff. And then I started 
I started painting again, partly because I just felt stressed out living in London. And then three months later, I moved to New Zealand. And the first thing I did when I moved to New Zealand was go to the art store and buy a load of paints and just it just carried on from there. So, I mean, I was still working full time. And yeah, what happened in the end was, I yeah, you know, I was working on a tree crew there. I, I hired a studio outside of my job. So I, I was painting in my studio and, and I got offered a job up in Auckland doing tree consultancy. And I thought, I, you know, I can't, I can't climb trees forever, if you see what I mean. And, <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, when they're in their sort of 30s and 40s, start, start getting out of the tree climbing and they're either going to doing tree consultancy or, or other things. But yeah, I was working this kind of corporate job in Auckland and it was pretty stressful. It was a pretty stressful job. I didn't realize how office based it was, was as well. And uh, it was a lot of hours. And all I could think about was painting. And I just, I really started realizing, I was like, man, there's got to be more to life than this. And I just felt really like lost and just not, just out of balance, but just not knowing why. Mm. And uh, I read this book by Eckhart Tolle called um, A New Earth, and it just blew my mind open. And then not long after that, I saw this documentary called uh, The Greatest Scam in History. And it was it was like how the financial system worked like summarized in 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 a half hour video and i was just like that's the first thing about money i've ever watched that actually makes sense it's like no wonder i didn't you know never really understood how it works and it just all this stuff like years afterwards i went down a few rabbit holes but things just start turning up and i just thought i'm not going to go anywhere in this job uh, like and just work in this career path it's just it's just just recipe for like misery and poverty basically and i just thought I'd rather take my chances and uh, go for being an artist. And I knew I needed some help. And I was, I was fortunate that I, I uh, met someone who uh, mentored me with my art and my artwork like really quickly improved. And it just went on from there. And then uh, in 2017, I set up a YouTube channel. I moved down to a place called Queenstown in southern New Zealand, which is, which is in the mountains because I wanted to spend time painting so I quit my job uh, all I did was I just picked up work as and when I needed it in Queenstown nothing related to my sort of you know career path so to speak as in in, in my uh, you know my matrix career path <laughs> and it just it just yeah it went, it went on from there and in the end I I set up uh, a Patreon channel in 2020 I started selling videos off my website and I was on I, I was on Patreon years i still have my patreon account but i moved everything to school last year so yeah so really my my thoughts were um selling paintings is really unpredictable and i wanted a way that i could make money from my art without having to worry about selling paintings you know patreon was good and everything but i could really start seeing the uh you know limitations of the platform i hope this isn't <laughs> gonna make anyone liable here or <laughs> <laughs> you're all good you're all good as I should have said, but uh, it was fine for where I was at, if you see what I mean. But I needed, I needed something more, you know, bigger, but in depth and more easy to use and stuff. And I, I, I'd, I'd unwittingly created all these courses over the years uh, on Patreon. So last year, I actually joined a blogging course on School, okay, uh, called Blog Growth Engine because I, because I, I got a blog on my website i've had that for years as well because it's the way i get traffic and get people onto my email list and within a within a few minutes of joining it i i'd never heard of school prior to that but i just thought man this is so easy to use and mm. i just thought this would be perfect for an online art school and and at the time i was i was really thinking about it and i was looking around at other platforms and i just kept coming back to school so in the end i set up uh, my school group coincided when they set up the uh, payment gateway that they've got on there and yeah i just moved everyone across from patreon to school so i was able to like you know fully set out the classroom section with all you know all my different courses like you know painting landscapes painting seascapes the beginners landscape painting course and and then uh, you know the the calendar function is just so useful because one of the things i've really been doing a lot in the last couple of months is doing regular zoom meetings so i do them at least once a week sometimes i'll do a random pop-up one but yeah i'll do a mix of like painting live streams and painting critiques <laughs> so um yeah so that's 
that's how I found school anyway. <laughs> it's incredible. I think it's really interesting how painting kept like rearing its head in your life over the years like ever since you were young you know and it was almost like a -a whack-a-mole it's like you kept trying to like put it down it's like no painting bad i can't make money from you i'm going to become a tree surgeon instead it's like what and then so you try all these different career paths and the painting keeps coming back it keeps coming back like obviously if you're reading uh toll you're you're into philosophy and things like that like what's going on there like whenever it comes to like your passion or like your life's purpose like uh, wh- why do you think painting was like that with you? Uh, it's uh, it's always just something I've like doing. Like I I just love the landscape. I just love beautiful landscapes, and especially being in New Zealand, it's just so inspiring. And it's I, I don't know how to explain it. I just feel like compelled to paint it. And there's just the other cool thing about being a landscape artist. It's like this never ending project that you'll never finish if you see what I mean, because you're always trying to, you're always seeing things. You're like, oh man, I'd love to paint that. And also as artists, we're always trying to make that painting like better than the previous one as well. So we're always trying to improve, but yeah, there's just so much inspiring things to paint here in, in New Zealand, not just New Zealand. I just, I I just find landscape. I, I think it doesn't matter where in the world I am or would live. I could find something inspiring to paint for sure so i just absolutely love painting and i love inspiring others to paint and i I love teaching it as well so uh yeah that's that's where that's come from i i don't really know how to explain it really it's just but i mean you're right in that um i i had this limiting belief that i couldn't be an artist for you know a very long time and i thought no you know better just you know, do what you're supposed to do and, and, you know, go to university and not, not that I had a bad time at university. It was brilliant. I drank a lot, uh, but <laughs> um, I, you know, it was, you know, university was right for me at the time and I'm glad I didn't get into debt for it, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, I mean, yeah, looking back now, I don't know whether, I don't know how relevant it is so much these days when you can get a, education for a fraction of the price off youtube <laughs> or just by, or hiring a mentor for something you know something that you're you're passionate about I, th- I think i think with the internet that that times have really really changed now and you can like monetize something that you're that you're passionate about but yeah with the painting it just it kept popping up more and i kind of subconsciously knew i was going to take up painting again i just knew i was going to do it again so and I'm yeah I'm so glad I did and and the more that I've focused on the goal of uh, being a full time artist is it's like more things have turned up to help me along the way. What like? Uh well, even just meeting my my mentor back in 2014, uh, he's he's also my best friend as well. He's he's uh, his name's Andrew Tischler anyway. He's a brilliant artist. He's definitely one of the best out there. But I was reaching out to at the time a lot of artists and no one would help me at all because I got to that point where my painting had plateaued and I knew I needed help and because I've never been to art school um yeah I was just struggling and and also you know there's other things going on in my life like you know I was just unhappy in my job and and uh yeah he he helped me and he, he also offered uh asked if I wanted to help him run these two outdoor painting art tours so that it's a French word called called plain air which means to paint outdoors so there were two plain air painting art tours in southern new zealand i was just like yeah man i'd love to do that and just that literally just flicked a switch and i was just like this is what i'm meant to be doing i'm not meant to be doing this job and i just suddenly it was like a weight had been lifted off me because i'm like i don't have to like try and climb the corporate career ladder anymore like i want to do and yeah that's that's how that happened anyway and yeah we we uh we ran the two art tours and it's that was really awesome and yeah i just i really got focused on on painting and you know it's taken it's taken me years to even get to where i am now with where i'm at in my uh business and there's still a long way to go man i've i've had a lot of challenges i'm still dealing with them a lot of them are on my own uh you know limiting beliefs that i've had that i'm working on at the moment as well so um yeah it's been an exciting journey that's for sure i've 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 learned a lot 
and uh, especially in the last yeah you know like eight nine years sort of since I've decided no I want to be a f- full-time artist uh yeah just learn loads of things I never imagined like you know even things yeah. like how to edit a video if you see what I mean I never imagined that doing that yeah you know making YouTube videos and you know reels and shorts and things like that so it's yeah it's been awesome but one one of the main things I realized was that um and this is probably true of mo- most artists is most of them they're not good at they're not good sales people and I, I was definitely I'm definitely like one of those people as well so you've got to uh I, I knew that this is something that I really need to to learn and I've, I've really been uh you know focusing on that I've I've joined uh you know mentorship program uh contentpreneurs with with Ted Carr and that's been super helpful and I think you just gotta I've right. heard the same but you just gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable you know what I mean? And get yourself out of your comfort zone and do things you've never done before. So, so whenever you think about those years where you weren't painting or, you know, all those years before you went full time, like I'm a big believer yeah. that like nothing's ever wasted, right? So what did you pick up in those years that have yeah. really helped you and kind of catapulted you forward in what you're doing now? Because, you know, you, you kind of were stockpiling a lot of, I don't want to paint too gloomy picture, but like stockpiling a lot of pain and frustration and like, ah, so there was that. But then there was also like, you were out in nature uh, all the time. You were cutting trees. You know, you were you were getting, you were getting like up close with things that you probably paint yeah. all the time. No, I think that's interesting. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I don't know whether this is sort of appropriate topics for a for a podcast, but uh, I mean, I, I, I had a, I had an alcoholic father when I was a child and, and he died when I was really young. It's part of the reason I started painting actually, because he would never let me go outside to play. So I used to spend all day drawing and painting and things, but you know, I had a, a horrific time at, at high school. It was just horrible. Just everything, you know, even, even with what I'm learning now, I'm just like, right. It's, it's, it was just such a horrible environment for me literally uh, yeah uh, <laughs> and I, I came out of high school with zero confidence man just like and uh it's it's like I've been fighting back ever since and and it's that it, I, th- I look at it now in, in a lot of ways as, as a good thing because it's it's really given me that drive to like like do better for myself and um I guess you know, actually, you know, even going to like university, actually, it did it did give me some confidence, and and then I started trying to do more things, like traveling, for example. You know, I, I'd, you know, one of the things I did on my uh, when I was at university was I, I went to Mexico because I had the opportunity to go there, and, and uh, at the time when I went, I had, I don't know why I had this fear of flying as well, but I was just like I really wanted to go, so I was just like made myself get on that flight and. And it's just like, yeah, these challenges I've had. Uh, I, yeah, I've just it's like I've made myself do things, and yeah, it just I I became more like open to opportunities and like things like getting offered the job in a in America, <laughs> which I don't ask me how the hell I managed to pull that. Off. I mean, I went to work for a tree company, having never worked on a tree crew in my life ever, and didn't even know what I was doing. But I was, I was just like, you know, I need. I was really just on the lookout for an opportunity and, you know, traveling there and going over there, just that, you know, gave me more confidence as well, if you see what I mean. And, you know, I, I think it's good in, in your twenties, if you're a guy to like, you know, perhaps do a, a job like working on a tree crew or something like, you know, just sort of like mans you up a little bit. I worked as a, a bike messenger for three years and I yeah. swear it was like the making of me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, yeah, I, you know, I once had, I once had a job on a, building site when i was a student or whatever it was like one of the best summers i've had man it was so i mean it's it was it was hard work and long days but it was just like you know fun working with those people and the banter and all that kind of i, I think you don't get it that kind of you know banter if you see what i mean like working in an office environment <laughs> no it's different man the camaraderie's totally, yeah, totally exactly. different. yeah so 
uh, yeah, I guess I just, uh, you know, push myself to to do more things. And I really start, you know, realizing that, you know, you don't have to stay in the place that you grew up in. If you see what I mean, there's the world's getting smaller and there's opportunities out there. So, um, yeah. And as I say, just with the, with the painting, it's, it's always, it really is always, you know, what I wanted to do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the tree work. I'm interested in, in plants anyway. I mean, I studied plant sciences, so, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to still, you know, at that time I was, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but being in that sort of green industry, if you see what I mean, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's part of the reason why I went into that. But I feel like it's, you know, if you, if I look back at my life already, I feel like they were all like pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that were kind of meant to happen that have led me to where I am now. Totally, man. Sense, yeah. So as you start to kind of like assemble those puzzle pieces, right? And you like close your eyes and you think about even like what the next three years will entail for you. Like, yeah. where do you want to go with school? Because you know, you've got a really big free community. You use that very Ted Carr style to put yeah. people and funnel people into your paid community, which is awesome. You're making a full-time living. You're, yeah. you, you, you're literally living the dream that you have from when you were super young. You're not a star of an artist. You're thriving. You're teaching other people. You sell your own patents. You charge other people and teach other people to do that. But like, what's next? Because you just have this incredible asset, both in terms of the skill that you've been developing, your craft, but then also this kind of like community and this audience that you've just been nurturing and growing and growing. So uh, like, I, I just feel like sky's the limit for you. Like, where, where do you want to go? Well, um, I mean, I really just want to inspire people to paint and just help them. And because I see them having this, the same struggles that I was having. And I feel like all it takes is just having the right uh, mentor and just having it, some things explained to you properly. And, and, and uh, you know, very often it just clicks and then you can just run with that information. But uh, I'm, I'm about to start doing, I've, I've started doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm about to start a group uh coaching uh like mentorship program it'll, it'll just be like a two-month program and uh, it'll get you back to basics with your painting and i'll just show you a load of ways that you can the idea is that you can quickly accelerate your painting skills so you can start either selling your art or making money from it starting an online art business or even if you wanted to teach it as well and yeah i'd, I'd like to inspire people doing that as well so i'm going to run that program through school i'm going to set up a school group for that but um yeah really the the whole thing is I, I just want to just i just want to keep painting and i just want to keep inspiring people to paint and just inspire people to you know focus on their their passion and if their dream is to become a uh you know they want to paint full time then then they should totally focus on doing that and just ignore what the naysayers say because there's always people that try and tell you you can't do it but you know see someone as me and there's other people that are living proof that you can do it. and just going back to schools school is just so brilliantly designed just the whole like i just i just love it i just think it's such an awesome platform like you know just the community section as well the engagement is so much higher as well you know you've got people chatting to each other i've got people sharing their artwork so it's just a really inspiring environment so it's it's just one of those it's definitely one of those platforms where it can as an artist it can really help you it, it can you can use it to help other people as well and it yeah just a a really inspiring place to be that yeah so this the sky is the limit with um yeah with with using a platform like school but yeah i'd also like to help artists as um you know develop strategies i mean this is like looking long term but you know maybe i can help them to start their own art businesses or sell their work online or make money from their art online yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. i'm in various phases of my business so i'm starting a new phase in my my art business at the moment and that's the the one-on-one -on -one coaching are you gonna compete in the games with that group yeah you want to compete yeah yeah because dude i would love to see you finish in the top 10 because there's a lot, let's be honest, right? And we love it. There's a lot of business type groups in school that typically, you know, do very well on the leaderboards. Dude, it would bring me so much joy to see an art school just kill it in the top 10. Yeah. That would be so awesome. Oh, I, I would definitely, I'd definitely like to, man, for sure. I mean, 
Yeah, it's it's exciting stuff. I, I've I only I, I think I only discover, discovered uh, Alex Hall Mosey last year. Actually, that's when a friend recommended one of his audio books to me, which I've I've uh, listened to. It's uh, really good. Uh, of of uh, listening to a couple of his books, audio books. But yeah, um, no, it's exciting. So you know what I, I find. Um, because as I say, a lot of a lot of artists are, are very scared of the the selling aspect of it. Because it, you know, you don't want to come across as like a sort of sleazy salesman. And I, I've definitely have struggled with it as well myself like, over the years. I'm getting a lot more like confident with it. If you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. We, I guess we just, you know, we want to paint. That's that's our main thing. We we want to paint and inspire others. But I guess the sales part can be a real obstacle for people. So. As I said, I've been trying to get comfortable being uncomfortable. So challenging myself to, you know, create new things in order to make money from it. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it in in making money from your art because if you're making money and then you're able to like give back by teaching people, it's like everyone wins, if you see what I mean. Sure. And it's, I don't know where the whole starving artist badge of honor came from. Where yeah, it's like th- there was like this weird divorce between commerce and creativity, and like any of the like the Michelangelo stuff. But like, dude, these guys were freaking killing it. Yeah, like they yeah. were selling their sculptures for like what would be the equivalent of like millions. So you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, and and I think that it allows you to do the art more and bigger and better and and exactly. take it to the next level. You know? So yeah. I, I I love your philosophy. I am curious though, like talking about like the the business side of school, where it's like okay. I want to, it's, it's clear to me if I, if I pay, you know, a thousand dollars a month to be part of this school, I might yep. get a return on investment. That's X, Y, and Z. There's kind of like a logic component there. How yep. do you go about putting a price on something like a painting? Because that yeah, painting yeah. could be on your website, you know, you sell paintings for under a thousand dollars. You say you sell paintings for over $6,000. And it's like, how do you go about put in a price yeah. on your art so we, you move away from what i would consider like the logic side of business and you and you move into a new category yeah i, I mean again that's another thing that's taken me quite a few years to determine what my prices should be and when i started selling my paintings i, I sold them pretty cheap which i don't think is a bad idea if you're uh you know an emerging artist but generally the way I price my paintings is I actually measure it on like per square inch or I'll roughly base it. So I'll cool. say like, for example, I'll, I'll charge six US dollars per square inch. And then, it, and then it get, you know, it's not, it's not set in stone either, but you know, it might get to a point where the painting's quite a lot bigger, but, and I'm still using the sort of $6 per square inch formula, but I feel like it's not quite, I'm not quite charging enough. And then I'll, I'll just up the price a little bit more. And the, the other thing I do as well, and, and I think you should be willing to do this as, as an artist, is um, you know some people do negotiate on price, which I'm also willing to do as well. I, I generally don't. I wouldn't ever like publicly discount a price on a painting because it undermines the you know the people that have paid full price for art. Yeah, I think art's one of those things where. It's probably not a good idea to put it on sale, if you see what I mean. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always in private, willing to negotiate on things, and especially when I do compositions. But that's that's how I price my work. But I mean, I, do, you, do you ever just do you ever just look at a piece and you're like, "Holy crap! I'm just that's a that's just awesome! Like I need to make yeah. that more expensive. Like this one here, I love this one. Is that the one that's behind you yeah, in your? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, like I love this painting. Like I look at this, I'm just like, if I painted this, I'm like, yeah, that's a ten k boy right there. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't have it for sale as much as that, but I mean, you know, slowly over the years, I've been been putting my prices up. But um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those things. You know what? Over the last few years, I haven't really focused much on selling my art. It's really all been about the the teaching and you know the Patreon community I had for for ages, and now my my school groups. But this year, I would like to spend a bit more time just focusing on selling artworks online, and more so because I'd like to be able to be in a better position of authority to teach it. Because I can, you know, I've sold paintings online. I've sold paintings through Instagram. 
you know, sold them off my website, sold them in real life, sold them through galleries, but I've never done it consistently because for the last few years I've been working on the online side of things and the, and the teaching aspect of it. And for me, for me, it's all about the joy of painting. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's why it's always been, I'd like to be able to make a living without having to worry about selling paintings, but it's definitely nice when you, when you make painting sales for sure. So this year I, I, I will, uh, you know, when I'm a bit more free time, focus a bit more on selling art online. I mean, that's another thing for artists as well. It's it's gone on the days are you have to be in a gallery, otherwise you're not going to make. Dude, I was just literally, I wrote down in the show notes here, like uh, become a full-time artist without going to art school. Like, and that's yeah, what school, yeah. that's what school, S-K-O-O-L is doing. Like it's democratizing the whole thing. You don't need to go to university. You can no, join no. Sam's art school, learn how to paint, sell your paintings within two months. It's like, you know, you don't need to climb the corporate ladder, like you said earlier. It's democratized the whole thing. And I'm so here for it. And I love the guys like you're leading the way in this niche. No, and I think it's just really exciting for all of us. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, look, no no disrespect to art school. I've, I've met a lot of people that have been to art school. And I'm like, what did they teach you? Right. Because they're, they haven't got the basics down. And when I did A-level art, I wasn't ever taught the basics. And it's no wonder that I've... No wonder I floundered for years with my own painting, paintings or whatever, because I was never taught the basics. And it's not too hard to learn it. I teach it in a way that's really easy to understand. And, you know, the the people that have joined my, my school community and they're getting coaching from me, uh, they're seeing results already. So, yeah, in this day and age, absolutely. Like, if you if you want to be you know, a landscape painter or portrait painter or whatever. I mean, I, I'm a, I teach landscape painting. That's, that's my thing. But yeah, you can find a community like on, on school and literally pay a fraction of the price of what you would learn in, um, you know, an art school and yeah, get your art career off to a, like, a, you know, a running start. If you sort of mean having spent a fraction of the price. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean, and, and actually get some like real world, you know, you know, coaching from from a real world artist that's making a living out of it. If you see what I mean. So totally yeah, as, as I say, the beautiful thing about the internet and the beautiful thing about sites like school as well is is people can share their share their skills and people can. I mean, I just as I say, I just feel like in the last few years, and even you know, I'm in a few school groups you know, Ted Gar's group, uh, you know, contentpreneurs, uh, which uh, for me, just in this last few months, I've just learned so much about, you know, selling and how to, you know, dial in my offer and things like that. And just like actual practical strategies that I would, that I just, I've not heard it anywhere else. And, and in a lot of ways, it's, it's pretty simple as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Dude. I- Ever about this stuff? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Final question, Sam. What advice would you give to someone who is just starting off on school? Awesome. Well, it's it's good to. I think probably the best thing is to is just to start off with a free community and probably what you'll want to do. So whatever you're uh, passionate about, uh, uh, if especially if you want to monetize it, is you need to get comfortable being in front of a camera. It's the day and age we live in. We live in the age of of everyone's got a camera now we've got social media we've got instagram youtube so start getting in front of a camera and showcasing what you're doing and then when you start building up an audience then start getting people into a free school community and and just engage with the people in your community give them lots of stuff away for free especially you know make some courses uh, you could even you could even go live, you know, on Zoom in your free community and just build up that engagement. And then after a while, when your audience gets bigger and, and you can then take it on to the next stage and then you can create a like a paid community. So I really, truly see the benefits now in a free community. I've, I've only had my free community just for a few months. I, I'll be honest, I was kind of really skeptical about the idea to start with but since i've done it it's really really beneficial and and it feels good giving stuff away for free actually yeah it does that's 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 what i would that's what i would do so get comfortable being in in front of a camera 
start sharing, you know, whatever you're passionate about, start sharing it on, on uh, Instagram and YouTube. Those are probably the two best platforms. And then once you're starting to build up some engagement and an audience, then start inviting people to a free school community. And then you've, you've, you've got them in there, give them loads of stuff away for free, get the engagement up, do some zoom calls with them. And then you can move on to the next stage and, and start up, uh, you know, a paid community or doing one-on-one coaching or both. But yeah, it, it takes a bit of time, but you just, just as long as you keep chipping away at it, you know, even if you've got a full-time job, just do it, just do it on the side and just start taking those steps to to move to in that direction. That's what I did. I, I just picked up work as and when I need it. You know, if I was low on money, I'd just go and, you know, do some, you know, pick up a part-time job or whatever. For me, it was... You know, with my painting, it was about getting my skill level up for one, and yeah. I needed that, you know, to get that brush mileage in. But yeah, that's that's what I would do anyway with a, with a school community. But yeah, definitely, definitely get on school for sure. <laughs> Phenomenal. Well, if you're listening to this, uh, there'll be a link to Sam School in the link wherever it is in the description on YouTube or on Spotify. There'll also be a link to start a free trial on School. And Sam, other than that, just want to say thank you, dude, for everything you've shared, both personal, professional, really, really good insights there. And uh, love that brush mileage at the end there. I'm definitely going to steal that. That's so cool. <laughs> I had an artist say that to me, brush mileage. Uh... I mean, it applies to anything that you're doing, really. It's just, you know, you have got to, you've, you've got to um, work on your craft for a little bit, if you see what I mean. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Sam, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks for that. <laughs>